Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. We've got another egg sack pulling today, and this is from our common pink toe, the Avicularia Avicularia. Now this is a real, a real mainstay for the hobby, and I think one of the best actual beginner arboreal spiders. These are such sweet natured spiders. Very, very easy to look after, and they really are quite tolerant of condition changes, which makes them ideal for people that are learning the ropes and, and what to do. And being an arboreal spider, they give just that little bit of an edge, but they tend to be quite slow and deliberate with what they get up to. So it makes them really, really cool, makes them ideal. Now then, what we've got here, this female here, we've been a little bit slow. Over the last probably five months or so, we've been a little bit slow on the breeding front. And this is just down to a lack of time. We've, uh, we've struggled to get the time to pair many of our spiders. So we're starting to catch up now. We're starting to get back onto it. So hopefully we'll have more to come. Now this was one of the ones that we done a while back and she managed to, she dropped relatively early. Um, we, she was paired on the 28th of the 12th, so December, and we got a sack on the 23rd of February. So literally a couple of months, and she was on a sack. So we are now today going to pull that sack and see whether it's viable or not. Let's hope, fingers crossed, we've got a good one. So we're going to take our, our lid off here. You can see this absolutely amazing tunnel here. They really are real architects in what they get up to, what they do. If you can see that clearly on the video, on the screen there, you can see this lovely tunnel that goes all the way out to here. One of the problems is, is when we open the door, obviously it pulls the front of the tunnel off. So we sort of try and refrain from doing that too much. I'll just move that around. You get to see the full impact of some of this webbing. They are absolutely crazy webbers. They really do make some incredible webbing. Now if I turn this all the way around, we can see into the back and our spider is down here and this is a separate chamber here and that's a separate one in that corner so she's down there she's looking in an amazing condition so what we're going to do now is we are going to try and pull this sack out through the top you probably you guys probably won't get to see a huge amount We've got to see, right, there it is, I can see it. Um, maybe if you get up high, you might just about get to see a little bit. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll turn this around this way. That might be it for you. Can you, can you see the egg sac? Can you probably It should be just down here, down this side. Just out of angle. Okay. Right, so let's. I can't actually see anything. Mm. Right. You can move them a little bit. Oh, thank you. Oh, she's hanging on to it. Always a good sign. She's taking it right to the bottom. Right. Here we go. Ooh. There we go. She didn't put up too much of a fuss really at the end there. She's looking like she, she's come up to have a look. Here she comes. If you come in here, you'll see she's come up to have a little look, see what's going on. I'll move that a bit closer. 
And as you can see, she's in absolutely beautiful condition. Just her feet. You can um, yeah, zoom in and probably get a better picture. There we go. There we go. Here she comes. Well, we can try her on a roach. She may well take take a bit of food. We'll try that. Nice big fat dubia roach here. We'll see whether she's um, interested in that. No. Yeah, she's uh, she's in very very good condition. She's webbing up. Right, let's have a little look and see what we got in this egg sac. And hopefully, all being well, we got some good stuff. Mm. This doesn't feel good. You see how it's quite shrunken? It started off as quite a big sack. As you can see, and it's shrunken in. I've got a feeling this is no good. This is all dried up. Yeah, it looks like it's all dried up. Oh, damn. What has caused that? Right. It is actually... Don't actually look to be fertile. Oops, I'm sticking to me. Yeah, this don't actually look to be fertile. Well, that's a little disappointing. No. Yeah, possibly. I mean, it wasn't going to be a particularly big sack by the look of it. It's um, it's an interesting thing because we followed the same procedures that we've done in the past with our avix, and we're normally quite good with them. And she's come back out now. You can see she's come out. She's having a little wander and a look around. So it's an interesting thing. She'll be back out again in a second. She'll, she won't stay hidden away for long. She'll come back. It's an interesting thing to see, um, to see these differences because, like we were saying, we've managed to keep these before. And we've, we've done them exactly the same each time, and we've been fairly successful. You know, generally speaking, we get good sacks. She comes again. <laughs> She's coming up again now. So um, the question is, what happened this time? Now, was it maybe a pure, um, just a poor, a poor pairing? Maybe our male was firing blanks. He just weren't quite up to the job. They don't look fertile at all. It looks like you maybe got the odd one or two there that were looking reasonable, but they've never actually done anything. So yeah, very, very interesting. It's incredible. Very interesting. Right. Well, she's in there busy webbing away, and we will go through the same procedure now. We'll literally just feed her up. 
I don't know if you managed to get a decent look of her when she did come up. You'll see she still had a really large abdomen. So she's looking really, really good. Um, in terms of her general physique, she is in tip-top condition. And as you saw there, she wasn't even particularly hungry. We give her a roach. She's not particularly worried about it. And you can see what we were saying about that nice, gentle be behavior of th that they have. And she's coming up now to come and say hello to the world. She's looking really, really pretty. Well, I'm sorry, my dear, you seem to have wasted your time. It's an interesting thing as well that quite often we, we say that um, when a female has eaten a sack, we wonder whether it's a case of that female has actually felt something wrong or, you know, she's got some inclination that things aren't right in the egg sack, so she's eaten it. And yet we get instances like this where she protected this egg sac even though there was nothing of any value in it. So do they really know what's going on? Do they, Or are they just holding on, hoping that they're going to be some movement? I'm sure once we get, if we allow them to hatch in with our females, they, they can feel the movement of them young slings when they're in their nymph two stages and they're ready to pop out. They or even nymph one sometimes, they, they come out, as soon as they start moving around within that egg sac, they can yeah, feel the them. Yeah, she's taken the roach now. A nice close up of her munching away on that. He's, um, yeah, look at that. She really is in good, good condition. So yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be an interesting thing. And it, and it opens up many, many questions. You know, do they actually, know what's going on in this egg sac you know or are we maybe just filling the idea with human emotions and and trying to work out what we think is going on you know at the end of the day spiders are very primeval you know they're really low down they're not gifted with intelligence and things like this so they purely purely run on instinct alone so it's a very very interesting thing to um to try and ascertain the differences of, with what's happening. And we see some of this when we're actually pairing our spiders, when we, we look at the way we maintain contact and things, when, when the male is in there and he's pairing. And then we also see the same thing when we do our rehouses, we act in a similar way to what they do when they pair, where we maintain contact. And this is all very basic instinct stuff to a spider. So it, you know, they are very, very, very basic. She's out and about now, look, she's looking around. She might well be, yeah. yeah the roach is making a run for it. He's like, no, I think we'll, we'll come out, we'll be out of here. We'll take him out so he don't pester her. And she's going to go back down again. Yes, yeah, she, she, may, she may well be searching for it. To her, in her mind, a predator has just come along and taken away this egg sac. And, um, you know, if it was a case of a real predator in the wild, she would probably have died as well. She would have become part of the meal. So, um, yeah, she might be on the lookout and do it, looking for her egg sac. Normally what will happen now is she will go and get a drink and then she will feed and then everything will settle down. But she's um, she's quite she's quite mobile at the moment. I'll try her again with this roach, and just see. We can put the roach there. I don't think she's actually particularly hungry, but oh yeah, there she goes. Yeah, she might literally still be in that notion that um, that this is a, a predator rather than prey. And she's literally just biting it because it's invading her home. I say, I don't think she's absolutely starving hungry. We'll get a quick photograph of her while she's out like this. Right. I think what we'll do is we will close her up and we'll leave her be and 
see what happens. She's teasing. She is. she is teasing. Oh, there she goes. She's picking it up now. There you go. Zooming in and out with them for a few seconds. There you go. Yep, she's just lifted it up, put it back down again. Remember, kids, don't play with your food. <laughs> she's definitely not doing that. No, she's not, she's not hungry. She's not hungry. Right, we'll put the backing board back on. We'll put the lid on. And then we'll get her back up on the shelf. And we'll leave her be. And let her just settle down a little bit. Right, well that wasn't the success we were hoping for. Um, but it is part and parcel of breeding. And, you know, we need to we need to run with the, the rough with the smooth. We will just have to work out. I got a feeling this has become this one has been more of a fertility problem. I think um, everything else is pointing in the direction that you know these eggs were just no good. So chances are, for whatever reason, that particular pairing did not make it. And this is what happens. I mean, for all we know, this may be a common thing in the wild state. You know, just because we pair our spiders doesn't give us the guarantee that we're going to have viable egg sacs. Or, or just even a viable pairing, you know. Not every pairing is bang on the money. So it's, um, there you go, she's took it now. She's grabbed it and she's actually feeding now. I don't know if, she, if I can probably, if I try and turn that around, she'll probably run away. I can come in on the side there and you can see there she's got that roach. Took her a little while to think about it. But you can see now with um, with these spiders how their their mind changes. Bit better, and it doesn't take them long to actually slip back into the next thing. And this is where that primal behaviour comes from. So one minute they can be in a threat pose, the next minute they've forgotten all about it. It's almost like an instant switch off. So it can literally change very very quickly. Very interesting. Yep, she's just holding that up now. So she's going to feed on that now. That's really cool to see. That's good. Right then. Well, until next time, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys.